right, welcome back to self. That's sleep, exercise, love, and food. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. Now, we've talked a lot about on this channel the benefits of intermittent fasting, but let's go a little bit further and talk about how it actually affects all the way down to the DNA going on. So when we look at intermittent fasting over the years, there's been so much research that's come out about it, and some of it hasn't been the most flattering. For example, we talked about how some of the data has said that compared to calorie restriction, there isn't a difference. But when you look at that data, the real reason behind that was you just can't eat junk food all day and expect to then lose weight and get healthier going on. But all of that aside, we know that there are so many benefits. But really, when it comes to intermittent fast, remember, there's several types. There's time-restricted eating going on, which is really the classic 8 and 16, where you have an eating window of about 8 hours, fasting for about 16 hours. We presented the data before that showed that the optimal eating window is about 6 to 10 hours of eating, the rest of the time being fasting going on. There's alternate day fasting where you eat one day fast the next there's the five and two method going on and then of course there's other types of fasting where you may do like walter longo's method of every few months where you fast for about four or five days consecutively going on now beyond just the impacts of fasting on our outer appearance one of the things that's really interesting is is in animal models this hasn't really been replicated yet in human uh, models yet, but in animal models, what we see is that intermittent fasting tends to extend lifespan, and it does so at the level of gene expression. So to make this a little bit simpler to understand, there are really two states our bodies go through. The first state is basically when we eat. As soon as we eat, there's all this metabolic activity and we're in the fed state. And what happens there is, is the body starts to focus on digestion and really taking anything extra and storing it. And that's where you end up having excess calories going in places where, you know, you probably don't want to have going. Now, when you flip that around and you go through the period of fasting going on, now that's where the fun really begins. Because what happens is there's all sorts of metabolic activity going on. And the focus there of the body in fasting is to focus on repair, to focus on maintenance. Most of us, because we're eating all day long, we never really truly hit that fasting state going on. So this sort of fasting state that we talk about, the reason it becomes so important is, is what we find in those states going on is that the genes that are responsible in inflammation, in oxidative stress, all of those genes, they actually start to get down-regulated. And the genes that are responsible for things like cellular repair and protection, those are the genes that we start to see get upregulated going on. So you can see there's this profound benefit that's going on and there's this constant battle between the fed state and the fasting state going on. And so this is why when we talk about data around fasting, it's so fascinating. And if you look at the longevity st uh, studies in animals, the data is quite interesting. And part of the reason why that may be is, is fasting also directly impacts how well our mitochondria, which are the powerhouse of our bodies going on, how well these cells function. And this is where we get most of the bang for your buck going on. So in terms of the benefits of fasting, you got weight loss, you got improved metabolic health, you got decreased inflammation, and in animal models, you even have increased longevity. But what's the latest research? So here's where it gets really interesting. So there's a brand new study published in Cell Metabolism in which the authors were looking at two groups of mice that were essentially fed the same amount of high calorie diet. Now, the first group of mice were given free access to food going on. And then the other one was really allowed an eating window of about nine hours each day. After about seven weeks, the researchers analyzed organ samples at different times of the day and night to be able to see fasting versus fed state and what the difference was. So here's where the results get really fascinating. What they found was that 70% of the mouse genes were found to respond to time-restricted fasting or time-restricted eating. In other words, these genes were either turning on or turning off as a direct response to what you were doing, fasting or eating going on. And nearly 40% of the genes that are found in some of the most crucial organs like the hypothalamus, the pancreas, and the adrenal glands were affected by time-restricted eating. 
Why should you care about these organs? Because these organs produce these really important hormones going on, such as insulin and all sorts of catecholamines. And these are responsible for so many things. When there's these imbalances, you get diseases like diabetes and all sorts of other chronic illnesses going on. Now, even more so than all of this data was that the researchers found that through time-restricted eating, they were able to see that the circadian rhythms of multiple organs that were functioning on their own biological clocks were actually able to come to a single rhythm. In other words, the act of fasting on a set period of time and then eating on a set period of time aligns your internal individual organs, circadian rhythms. And this could have significant impact on shift workers, people who do graveyard shifts, who suffer from metabolic syndrome. Fasting could actually be a very healthy way for them to turn around and start to set up their circadian rhythms better. So the bottom line here is fasting can be done safely. Of course, there are certain people who should not fast and you always want to talk to your healthcare provider before you start. But overall, fasting can actually be done very safely. It's a really simple thing to do because you can build habits that are sustainable. Personally, a six to 10 hour eating window followed by fasting is what the data supports and is what I find that most of my patients can stick to. So if you haven't tried fasting already, now might be a great chance to strive and to understand that the benefits of fasting go so much further than just skin deep. They go all the way down to our mitochondria, our DNA, and regulate even things like our circadian rhythms. As always, thanks so much for watching this episode, guys. If you have questions, concerns, comments, drop them in the chat below, and I will see you guys next time.